All right, everyone, welcome. This is Craft Beer Me, a show by beer drinkers for beer drinkers. My name is Carlos, and I like IPAs and browns. My name is Jessica, I like IPAs and sours. I'm Derek, and I like Hefeweizens. I'm Olivia, and I like IPAs and Belgians. So this episode, we're going to be reviewing the Pure Project. But first, what's new in the world of craft beer? Well, I guess the big news for was Twisted Manzanita closing down their PB uh, tap room, I believe, right? That's what it was. Yeah. Very abruptly, right? Very abruptly. It's, it's weird because, like, a lot of places have been opening up, and then we went to Twisted Manzanita's a couple months ago, yeah. and it seemed fun. Like, it gets packed, and a lot of people were there. And Well, I think, I don't know, I think PB is kind of the wrong location for craft beer. Was that the one you guys went to, PB? Or? No, 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 no Santee, Santee, the original uh, spot, which is awesome. Um, but I don't know, PB is like not really your craft beer crowd, per se. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I feel. It's where you go to get wasted? Yeah, yeah. it's your frat and sorority um, college people trying to, you know. So do you feel, so you definitely feel it's more the location versus the quality of the beer or? Absolutely, I'm a huge fan of Manzanita. Um, I've been drinking their beers for a couple years now and I'm always excited to try their new releases and I just, I just think that that location maybe wasn't the best spot for them, but you know, whatever future projects they have going on, um, I, I hope it's successful. I think they're great. Because I personally haven't tried it, but so my initial thought was like, okay, is there just as due to the fact of the oversaturation of craft beer places opening up? Was it the quality of the beer? Like, so that was my initial thought. I, I don't know. I mean, because, yeah, I don't know of any other place in PB that serves beer like that, but I know Barrel Republic. Do you guys know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. self serve beer bar. I mean, I've been there a couple times and. Mm-hmm. It's like a different atmosphere, but it's a it's an East County feel, you know. Twisted Manzanita, they got the Manzanita trees, you know. It's very East County. Um, I feel it, it it represents a different part of San Diego, and I don't feel like PB is the crowd that's going to connect with that sort of um, place, you know. But what was the other thing we were going to talk about? It was um... uh, the website. The website for uh, growler, growler fills. California growler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, so how does that work? Like what is that? So it's it's what it, what's the website? It's Cal, it was like California and mm-hmm. it's basically it just uh, loads to a Google Doc spreadsheet. Yeah. Google spreadsheet and it has a tells you if you, if they do growler fills, it tells you if they fill growlers from other places. Like it's kind of like checklists. Like can I go here and do this? Yes, no, or whatever. So, so it's a pretty extensive list of all the yeah. breweries in California. So it's like can I bring my stainless steel or can I bring my glass and. Can Oops. I bring my Manzanita to yeah. oh. Pure Project and get a fill? Will they do that? That's what I was Will they charge you for taping? Yeah. Do they tape it yeah. there? Do you have to bring it yes. pre-taped? And stuff yeah. like that. So it's like little notes about what you should know if you're considering to get a growler fill. The brewery we're reviewing today is the Pure Project. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a new brewery. They're located in Miramar. Miramar. Biramar. Biramar. Yeah, we went there and mm-hmm. we had a really good time. Mm-hmm. Pure Project. Um, I was talking a little bit to the owner that I found out, and um, it's run by a husband and wife. They used to live in Costa Rica for a few years or something, but um, they were telling me kind of like in a hilarious way that they were sick and tired of drinking the lagers there. And they were home, they're home brewers, so they're like, oh, let's just brew our own beer. Let's start our own brewery at some point. Yeah. They're just like, let's, let's do our own thing. But like, there's too many issues with like the wastewater and like the environment. It was just, mm. it was just too much. It was, was going to be too expensive. So then they um, hooked up with, um, what was it, Brewery Igniter yeah. you were telling us about? Yeah, Brewery Igniter we talked oh. about last week. Yeah, and um, they got a spot there. They were offered um, that area to, you know, start you know their passion and everything and then all all their um i guess their um their theme i mean it's called pure project and it goes off of that pure vita of um coast of uh, costa rica costa. that pure life so a lot of their ingredients are globally sourced and are organic and mm-hmm. are all natural. natural um so they have pure mm-hmm. all the ingredients are pure all pure um gluten free <laughs> I, I don't know maybe they'll start making gluten free beer but you know they mostly have like they have a, a different types of things. They have mostly, you know, like IPAs, they got Saison, they got some Goza, you know, we're going to try a couple of them today. Um, but yeah, they're, they're really up and coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything was really good so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. So the first beer we're going to try is a Saison. It's called the La Vie and Rosé. 
This is a Saison with honey and hibiscus. And this is um six and a half percent alcohol. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Just got that fill today. Fresh. Just got the fill today. It's like globally sourced. Uh... <laughs> globally sourced. Nice color. Like yeah. Color. Hibiscus. Okay, guys. All right. Let's see. It's. Ooh. Smell the tart. You got a little bit of that like, hoppy, earthy. Mm, earthy, earthy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like a tea. Mm -hmm. Right. Like a tea. Definitely a tea. Color is really awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love the color. Definitely it looks like a rose, like if you're in a. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Ready? Yeah. All right. Cheers. 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 Oh, man. Mm. Really good. You gonna go for another sip? Dry finish, a little tart. Definitely on the finish. It's like juicy, dry tart. Mm -hmm. Kind of getting it like that. Not too much tart, though. Yeah, it's so a good balance. I feel like it's very crisp and refreshing. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very well carbonated. Like yeah. effervescent. Like a rosé? Mm-hmm. Mm. Very much. Kind of reminds me of that. Very bubbly. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's like a brunch beer? Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. Hmm. I agree with that. Do you guys think that people will be fooled with this beer if you were to give it to somebody that was still beer? Or if it was like an overly carbonated rosé. Mm. Like this is like a sparkling wine that's a little carbonated. Or people would be able to tell this is a beer. I don't know. It has that real dry level. It's almost hoppy finish. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I, not know, so I much. personally think it would. Yeah? Yeah. So like if you had to sum up this beer in one sentence to someone... Kind of like if you were working at a bar or if you were taking another friend. Mm -hmm. Like, how would you kind of oh, give this sell it? It's, yeah, it's, yeah, sell it. Yeah. How would you sell it? I don't know. I think I, I'd go with what your description was about, you know, definitely more of a Sunday, easy going, light, but uh, kind of a wine rosé feeling. So if that's something that they're into or if they just something to, like, they want to kick back with, then this is going to be their beer. So... I'm going to go completely, I don't know, abstract and say it reminds me of um, like blooming wildflowers in the spring or something in a meadow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like bright and crisp and just, I like it a lot. How it's would cool. you sell that in a haiku though? Uh, <laughs> not going there, but that's, that's all I got for you today. <laughs> you can get all poetic on yeah. uh, No, it's just really... Um, and, it, and the fact that it has hibiscus in it reminds me of like flowery. Yeah, yeah. Just, or like morning dew on a field. I don't know. Uh, it's really good. <laughs> For me, this, I think, yeah, going so along the lines of like the Sunday brunch. Mm -hmm. Or my sister likes more sour beers and like lambics. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if it's the person that's going out that doesn't drink beer and wants something closer to wine yeah then this is something that you would probably grab that's a good way of putting it you know yeah definitely a light refreshing crisp beer that i meant if you're definitely in like herbal more floral type of flavors then mm -hmm. it's something definitely you can pick up and enjoy mm -hmm. well, absolutely mm -hmm. so that uh after church beer right <laughs> <laughs> so uh, last and ultimate question is this beer pint worthy i think it's pint worthy for yeah. sure mm-hmm I think so too. Mm -hmm. I, I find myself going back to it over and over again. And again, it's light, refreshing, crisp, matches all of that. Pint worthy, multiple. <laughs> I agree. I'm definitely down in this, so pint worthy for sure. Do you have anything left? I mean, there's like nothing Can in the glass. I have another <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have Likewise, another, I keep right? on going go back to it. it so. It's really good. Cool. By all means, have at it. All right, so the second beer. Mm -hmm. That we're gonna try is the Evangeline. This is a Goza, it's at 5%. Goza typically, they're a fermented German, um, what the heck is it? It's a fermented 
German wheat beer. Typically you're gonna get a lot of salty character and some sourness from the lacto, and then sometimes, which is the case with this beer, we like to infuse it with some fruit character. And this one has grapefruit. So. Very cool. Woo! That's great, I mean. I felt it. I, I felt, felt it. I was expecting we're it. The, we're in the splash zone. I know. <laughs> okay. I like the names so far. Yes. La Via and Mose oh, and Evangeline. Oh, that was a one. Oh, that's okay. Ready? All right, let's take go. a whiff. Ooh. Smells so juicy. Yeah, exactly. I get a lot of that fresh grapefruit. Or like that, I guess, citrus flavor. Or citrus flavor, it's like citrus aroma. Like if somebody kind of like just cut a grapefruit. Yeah, sorry. very zesty. Mm -hmm. Zesty? I get a zesty smell. Oh, man. good? Shall we? All right. Yes. Cheers. 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 Wow. Not too sour, kind of light on it. I get a sour salty. <laughs> salty yeah. for sure. It's crazy because up front it's super sour and tart. Yeah. And then it finishes with a really bready, biscuity. Ooh. I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's like completely different from the start. I definitely get more salty and tarty. Mm -hmm. yeah. I get a lot, a lot of salt, but I meant for me this is... For me, it's not oh. too sour. <laughs> for you, for you. <laughs> for you. Is yeah. anything too sour? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, doesn't seem really weird, but if beer made love to the ocean, yeah, and had a fruit fiesta, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go on, keep going, keep going. <laughs> I like right. the smell. I, I, I taste it. Are I taste it. rated. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is good. It goes down easy like the last one. And keep in mind, goes is, I guess, usually are um, consumed or good summer beers. Yeah. No. So on a hot or typical hot day, you can have this and it's definitely be really refreshing. Definitely is. Mm -hmm. Do you need another pour? Yeah. You need another pour. Yeah. Let's pour it down. <laughs> That's right away. Wow. Like I said, it's a really right solid goza. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely yours, definitely. Just straight up. Just it's it interesting, stuff. cloudy. Yeah. Cloudy, grapefruity color, I would say. What would you say to your friend about this beer in a sentence from Derek, Olivia, and myself? <clears throat> uh, I guess the way I would put it was just, just straight up summertime beer. Like That's the way I see it. Like, I don't know if I could really have this, like, any other time for me. So, if you want some, you know, chill out to and, you know, with a sunny day, then this is definitely it for me. And it would probably be for you, too. I think I'm on the beach in Costa Rica <laughs> <laughs> with this beer, and it's delicious. I feel like this would be, like, the rehearsal dinner of a wedding beer. Mm. Like backyard wedding. Mm. Like this is something that you would use as a substitute. If you wanted to have beer, this would be it. Salty, refreshing, but it's good way to put it. Queen. I like that. Um, for me, I guess I, I'm going to stick to the summer theme. Um, I'd say to have this beer I mean, during a picnic or whatnot. Um, obviously, again, on a hot summer day, something easy to drink, something refreshing and fruity. Kind of, I know this is a grapefruit, but it kind of reminds me of that, like, I don't know, those like a watermelon you would have on a summer day, or well, in this case, we're having grapefruit on a summer day. Oh, nice. mm -hmm. Well, if you guys like this beer um, and you guys want to visit it and you guys want to rep it, you can buy the shirts directly from the brewery, or you can go to Shirts on Tap. That's where I got this guy right here. Hey. Shirts on Tap, you. Um, I think for starting about 10 bucks a month, they deliver a shirt to your door, a local brewery in San Diego, and a coupon to the place. So this month, it's Beer Project. Um, 
but it's really good. One liter, 32 ounce growler fill is 12 bucks. Two liter, um, 64 ounce growler fill is 12 bucks. Um, is this beer pint worthy? I think so, yeah. I guess, well, I would do a half, personally. Half pint? I would do a half. Pint worthy for me, absolutely. I like it. Even though I'm barely treading the waters on sour beers and I like IPAs more and I like the bitterness more out of a beer, the fruitiness is grabbing me and, and the saltiness is good, but it's not so overpowering. So I would definitely get a pint of this. Same. I would get a pint. Um, definitely very easy drinking beer uh, with that fruity character and kind of that sweetness as well. Um, so I meant... Definitely a pint would be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you guys went to the tap room, right? So how how was that though? It's good. Oh, we didn't even talk about that, did we? Yeah. No, the tap room is nice. Um, it is small, but it's very cozy and intimate. Kind of small. Um, I had a few cool highlights. Yeah, it's very earthy and natural. So um, even the coasters, kind of like a, like a wood trunk. The tabletops are kind of like that too, and then the benches are like planks of wood, and then even the Pier Project logo has like a beautiful like green, like a flower, or like, like a not not even tree. flowery. It's just like very natural and green. So do you guys feel that that enhance your tasting experience? I feel like like as far as the beer is concerned and stuff. Like I mean, that? presentation definitely is important, mm -hmm. and they deliver. Uh huh. So Pier Project, they're about a month in. They're located in Miramar. Um, really good solid beers um, and their tasting room I feel like is a good reflection on where they started. They went to Costa Rica, came back, wanted to bring the vibe and the flavors back with them with how they locally and globally source all the ingredients to get everything unique. Mm -hmm. um, and it's definitely worth checking out and grabbing a few pints. Mm -hmm. you know? Cheers to Pure Project. Cheers yeah. to Pure Project. Cheers. 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 Yeah. Good. So this bottle wraps it up. This is Craft Beer Me. Um, you can catch us on Instagram and Twitter at craftbeermesd or craftbeermesd.com. Once again, my name is Carlos. My name is Jessica. My name is Derek. I'm Olivia. And we'll catch you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.